Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Boy, that's a good place to be, isn't it? Right in the center of God's will. Well, I appreciate Brother Larson and uh, Miss Jennifer for being with us again tonight and preached a great message this morning. And uh, I appreciate Brother Angel and his family being with us and Brother Cranfield. You know, I, Brother Angel was, uh, when he was speaking, I, I started thinking, I wonder how many, I wonder how many men are missing the call of God because they think they can't do what God wants them to do. Because in our mind, Brother Russell, we think, well, you know, and I think part of it is because too many people view pastoring, preaching, evangelism, missionary as, an, as a vocation, as a job. And, and we, you, you mentioned this morning, we're, we're pushing Bible college, and we're telling you, you, you need to go to Bible college. You need to, if you want to be a preacher, go be at Bible college, right? Go to Bible college. Uh, but there's a lot you'll never learn in Bible college. And, and so what happens, I think, sometimes is we've, we've over the years, you, you want to be a banker, you want to be an accountant, attorney, doctor, whatever, you go to school and learn how to do those things. And being a preacher is different. You don't go to school to learn how to be one. God calls you to do it. And so I think what happens is we'll look at these great preachers, and, and I was this way, Brother Shane. When, when I felt like God wanted me to, to, to preach, I was 29 years old. Been, I was a businessman, been in business, and that's what I knew to do. And I went to going to a great church and loved my preacher, and, and uh, our life was pretty, pretty comfortable, just to be honest with you. And uh, I felt like God was dealing with my heart. And I'm like, now, God, I can't do this. I, I'm not Bobby Robertson. I'm not, I'm not Noah Fry. I'm not Tom Malone. I'm not Lester Roloff. I'm not Oliver Green, Jay Harrell. I'm none of these. These are great men of God. I'm just me. I'm, I'm this little guy doing this, this, this business over here. And what I learned was, God didn't need me to be any of those, those men, right. right? But I was afraid, and I thought, you know, I didn't want a pastor. I thought, boy, I sure don't want to be a pastor somewhere because they, they, they'll, I, I see how people treat our pastor sometimes and, you know, and all the stuff he has to do and go to the hospital 47 times a day and people still get mad that you don't go to the hospital enough. And, you know, and I thought, I won't do that. I, I, I wouldn't mind being the next Oliver Green, stand at my home church, and I'll continue to do my business, and then I'll preach when God opens doors. And God sent me down to this little church on the side of the road, had about 10 people, and said, hey, uh, we left that morning. I told Miss Ellen, I said, I believe God wants me to pastor that church. <laughs> now, I say all that because I think there's some young men that in their mind they're thinking, I can't do what you do or do what you do or do what you do and maybe God never called you to do that. I can't go to Chicago, can't go to Calif uh, Colorado, can't go to California. I can't, I can't do those things, right? So we, we sit back in fear. And we miss God's will because we're afraid that we'll be uncomfortable, right? Right. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a pretty interesting and fun thing just to say, you know what, I'm... It's going to find out, right? I mean, you ever been there? Have, there's something over there, and there, there's this curiosity in you that you're going, probably shouldn't reach my hand down in there, but I'm going to find out what's in there. And that's kind of like it is serving God. You don't know what... You don't know what Colorado's going to be like this time, even though you've been there. You, you don't know what Chicago's going to be. I don't know, I, I don't know Brother Larson, what this area is going to be. I've 21 years, this changed a lot. But let's, let's find out. And so I'm not, let me say it this way, I'm not, I'm not pushing you young couples or you young people and saying you need to get out of here and go do something for God. But, but I do believe this. Brother Russell, I think sometimes we get so comfortable where we are. And she just said, sang it, in the center of God's will. And I believe there's a lot of people that are miserable, not because they're not saved, not because they're not reading their Bible. 
They're just, they're just missing God's will. And, and sometimes we think that means that I'm out in gross immoral sin. That's not necessarily it. You can go to a good, good church and, mi and miss God's will. Right? And so I'm, I'm just convinced that in these last days that, that uh, Brother Larson, I know you, you've mentioned it, and Brother Caudill at Macedonia had mentioned, so we're just not seeing that many guys go into missions. And we're not seeing it. We, we used to get three to four calls a week, it seemed like. Now if we get three or four months, we're like, so I just believe we're at a place we need to be praying for more laborers. That's what the Lord tells us to do. And praying God would hear my, send me. Hear my, send me. Amen. Well, listen, I know, I know that... Uh, we're getting the preacher in the pulpit a little later than we normally do, but I don't care. I believe God God can speak to our hearts. And so, Brother Larson, you come and preach. You do what God tells you to do, and you preach as long as God tells you to preach. We'll see how hungry he is, won't we? If he's not real hungry, he might preach longer. But uh, I sure appreciate him and Miss Jennifer for being with us. They're such a blessing. And, uh, Preacher, thank you for being with us. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity. Good to be in the house of God again tonight, isn't it? And how many have a Bible tonight? Hold it up real high. All right, now turn it sideways so I can see how much you're reading it. No, I, no. You know, we're living in the days of electronic Bibles, and it's hard to, it's hard to determine. But uh, uh, I, I love the Word of God. I hope you love the Word of God. Um, you know, when you open up the New Testament, let me just say this tonight. When you open up the New Testament, you have to come to this conclusion. God never takes time to justify missions. He, ne he never takes time to prove missions. He just more or less assumes that when a person knows the Lord Jesus Christ, they will have a missionary heart. And, and by the way, can I say this tonight? For Christianity to be true Christianity, it, it must be missionary Christianity. Amen? I mean, uh, uh, when you think about that, that's the whole reason God has raised up the local New Testament church in the hour in which we live. And uh, when a church has a vibrant heart for the world and, and for mankind and for the lost, that church is obeying the command of the Savior, and uh, that church is really fulfilling its reason for existence. And so with that in mind tonight, let's take our Bibles. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 3 tonight. Ephesians chapter 3 tonight, and we're going to read verse 20 and 21. And this is our text tonight, and I, I trust it'll... It'll be a help and a blessing to you here. And verse 20, the Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And then verse 21 says, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Lord, tonight we thank you for the opportunity we have to gather here. Lord, I thank you for the ministry of Curry Town Baptist Church. Lord, thank you for the faithful uh, folks here, year in, year out, who stand shoulder to shoulder with pastor, conduct ministry here in this part of the country, and Lord, and faithfully try and reach out and, and win people to Christ. Thank you for the ministries of this church. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony tonight we heard from Brother Angel, and we th thank you for uh, his faithfulness, Lord, to continue to answer your call. Thank you for his family. Uh, there standing with him. And Lord, we thank you for Taylor tonight and Lindsay and little MJ. Lord, bless their deputation. Help them uh, to get to the field as soon as possible, yeah. Lord. And Absolutely. pray that you'd uh, give them everything they're going to need and give the angels everything they'll need. Yeah. And Lord, we just uh, depend upon you tonight. And, and Lord, I pray that you'd take the simple message now and, and use it in our lives. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I start tonight, let me just thank you again, church, for your kindness, uh, the comfortable room, the, the goodie basket, and uh, all of your uh, encouragement today. It's been a blessing. You know, sometimes I come into a church, and I know some of these men know what I'm talking about, but sometimes you leave in a church, you know, and uh, you're really not that encouraged, but we always leave Currytown being encouraged. Amen. And I thank God for you folks, and thank God for the opportunity to be with you today. You know, when the Israelites came out of Egypt under the blood of the Passover lamb, it was a real time of rejoicing. 
I mean they had been in slavery and they had been, uh, you know, uh, in bondage, but, uh, you know, they witnessed the mighty hand of God, and God uh, delivered them from bondage, and they were no longer slaves. And in just a few days, they would stand at the edge of the Red Sea. And at, uh, at the, uh, I guess, at the onslaught of, of their journey, as they, as they started out, as they, begun to, as they began to go into the, the promised land, or at least try and journey towards the promised land, they got to the edge of the Red Sea. And you know that uh, Pharaoh's soldiers were in hot pursuit. And it, it was at that very point that uh, their attitude changed quickly, didn't it? I mean, they had been rejoicing. They had been uh, praising God for the fact that they were now free. And, and now they stood at the edge of the Red Sea, and there was a challenge. And unbelief crept up. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, their attitude changed because of their circumstances. You know, it's amazing to me as, uh, as we've gone through this thing called covid and uh, we've gone through what we've gone through in our country and what we've seen in the past several years. You know, if we're not careful today in the day in which we live, apathy can creep in. Right. And we can begin to think that, you know what, God just may not be able to do what he used to do. I was thinking about the children of Israel. They stood there at the edge of the Red Sea. Moses uh, was instructed to lift, lift his rod, and, and that Red Sea parted like a wall-to-wall -wall carpet, and they walked through on dry land. And, of course, you know what happened after they had gone through. And they were two to three million people at that point. And after they, gone through, had they, after they had gone through on that dry land, of course, those uh, Egyptian soldiers came and they were drowned in the process and it, it would seem as though the children of Israel would learn their lesson but it didn't take long for them to forget the Red Sea. Three days later they come to a place called Merah and my the waters are bitter and so they, uh, they, they begin again, they, their attitude began to change and uh, that rejoicing left them and uh, all of a sudden now they, uh, they, they looked at Moses and they, they asked Moses if he had brought them out there to kill them. And, and, uh, but God caused the, caused the waters to be sweetened and so they drank the waters. So God met their need again. Two and a half months later, they have nothing to eat. And they're murmuring and their attitude has changed and, uh, you know, certainly uh, apathy has crept in. And, and, uh, and so God provided them manna from heaven. And then you get to the place of Exodus chapter 17, and they've come to a place called Rephidim. And the waters are again bitter. And uh, so they picked up stones, and they wanted to stone Moses. And I like what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 17 and verse 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord. Hey, that's the place to go when things don't go well. Cry unto the Lord, amen. And so, uh, you know, when things look blismal or dismal and when things look uh, really bleak, but, but uh, Moses cried unto the Lord. You see, the children of Israel came to a place in their lives where their reactions were stemming from a thing called unbelief. And their problem was they could not see that it could be done. They just could not see that it could be done. And at that point, they put God in a little box... And they put them away and they said, you know what, God just can't do it. Right. You know, we're living in a day, ladies and gentlemen, where if we're not careful, right. that same attitude can creep into our Christian lives. Right. Now, this is Mission Sunday, and, and let me share this with you. The command to reach a lost world, the, the Great Commission, and the command to reach a lost world is a huge challenge. And, and, and I know it's a huge challenge. And we look at it and, and we understand the challenges involved in that. And there are circumstances on, on many different mission fields that, that seem too great to overcome. But, but aren't you glad tonight that God is bigger than our human abilities? Aren't you glad tonight that God is, 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 is much larger than our human reasoning? And carrying out this great commission command that we've been instructed to carry out really amounts to his ability to use us in ways we never imagined. Right. It's all about him tonight. Yes. It's not about us. Yes, I want you to see in this passage tonight in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, notice with me the Bible says, Now unto him, unto him that is able. 
That, that word able, if you look it up in a concordance, Mr. Strong's concordance is the one I went to. And if you look up that word able, it, it really comes from the Greek word dunamai. And we get our word dynamite from that word. And so uh, the Bible is really saying, you know what? God is certainly able. It, it, means to, it means to be powerful. It means it's absolutely possible. And you think about this command that we've been given to evangelize the world. When we consider the Great Commission in the 21st century, there are those that say, and I've heard people say recently, well, you know, it's, it's, it's just not possible to accomplish what God is commanding us to do. I actually heard that in a church not long ago. I guess they were maybe referring perhaps to the vast masses of people that now live on planet Earth, 8 billion people now living upon our Earth. Maybe they were referring to the condition of our world today. But can I say this evening that God is able. God is able. All things are possible. And, a, and, and really, when you think about the Great Commission, it does not depend, it does not depend on our, fr our frail human ability. It does not depend on the condition of the world tonight or the attitudes of people towards God or the Bible. Our God is the God of the impossible tonight. And as you see the supernatural God, and as you read about the supernatural God in the Bible, he wants to do, and he still wants to do, a supernatural work in our lives tonight. Let's turn to Luke chapter 1 tonight. I want you to begin reading at verse 30 tonight. This is where the angel of the Lord appears to Mary. And he tells her what great things he's going to do through her. Notice with me in Luke chapter 1 verse 30. And the angel said unto her, unto her Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive, and in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall, shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing that, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who, is, who was called barren. For with God, I love this, for with God nothing shall be impossible. May I say tonight we serve the God of the impossible. God did the impossible here. We serve a supernatural God. Listen, he is not bound by the laws of nature. He created the laws of nature. And the Lord told Mary, you know, and, and by the way, Mary, just in case you'd like to know, I'm going to do the same thing that I, I, I'm doing in your life. I'm going to do that with your cousin Elizabeth. Nothing, nothing exceptional about Mary, nothing, nothing extraordinary about Mary, except for the fact that God, our supernatural God, was going to do a supernatural thing. And that's what God wants to do in your life tonight. Our supernatural God wants to do a supernatural thing in your life tonight, in my life tonight. And we have to wake up to the fact and understand and realize and just embrace the fact that we serve the God of the impossible tonight. Can I say that that word impossible is not found in God's dictionary? That's something, that, that's something that, that we have come up with as humans, you know. That, that term is something we use as human individuals. Miracles are real. Nothing is impossible with God. Impossible is a word that man uses. And, and when you think about all of this, God, our supernatural God, wants to use us in a supernatural way. But we have to realize the need. We have to see the need. To accomplish the impossible, we have to realize something, hey, something needs to be done. You'll never accomplish much if, we, if, if you never come to the place where you say, you know what, something needs to be done. There's, there's a church on this property called Currytown Baptist Church. I know a little bit of the history of the church and what Pastor was referring to many, many years ago. You know, why is there a church on this property? Because years ago, a, a group of people in days gone by determined there was a need for a church like this. 
And that pastor came a number of years ago, and the church had to be really kind of restarted. And, and, but, but, you know, he recognized that there was a need. Every time God, the supernatural God, wants to use you and I, we've got to see the need. We've got to understand that there's a need somewhere. And, and, and that group of people years ago that formed this church, they realized there was a need. Hey, why is there, why is there a mission agency called Baptist International Missions over there in Tennessee? Because way back in 1960, a group of pastors realized that there was a need. And they got together and they voted, they voted on the fact that they were going to form a mission agency not to send missionaries. Hey, local churches send missionaries. But they were going to assist the local church in that process. Hey, why is there a Macedonia missions over there in Georgia? Because, because someone saw a need. And they saw the need to assist the local uh, church in the process of, of not only sending missionaries but supporting missionaries. And someone saw there was a need. Others maybe had failed, and others had tried and failed, but, but men saw that there was a need. Do you, know that, do you know that the bumblebee, the bumblebee, aerodynamically, the bumblebee cannot fly? Its body is too big for its wingspan. Aerodynamically, he is not supposed to fly, but nobody told the bumblebee that. And this summer, I saw those guys flying all over the place. Amen? You see, with God, everything is possible. And we have to see that, that, you know what, as far as we're concerned, our, our vision, our, our thinking is so limited. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But 8 billion people now living on the face of God's earth. And, and the Bible says when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. The laborers are few, as Pastor was saying just a moment ago. And, I, and I'm afraid tonight maybe... We've bought into this idea just a little bit that maybe, maybe God isn't doing what he used to do. And we take God if we're not careful and we'll put him in that little box and we'll just kind of assume that maybe it just can't be done. It can be done in the hour in which we live. It might not seem possible at this point maybe for you to step out by faith and to maybe go to a city or town to start a church like Brother Angel. It may seem impossible at this point. It may seem like it's virtually something that you cannot do, but, but you know what? Because of a need, you ought to at least attempt the impossible and say, God, you are a supernatural God, and you can do things in my life, and you can assist me in my life to do what you're calling me to do. All of these men would admit that when God came calling, we all had this thought immediately, I can't do that. Every single one of us. I mean, we were all church members. We were all, we were all members of local churches. We enjoyed the ministry in local churches. But our first reaction was, was God, I don't think I can do that. And I came to the conclusion that I couldn't, but he could. Our population in America is exploding in growth tonight. I mean, in the past decade, we have grown by 20 million people. It's amazing that this mission field that we live on called the United States of America. 37 million deaf people now living in America. We have three deaf church, church plants or churches tonight pastored by deaf pastors. I'm going I'm to be preaching a missions conference at one in Columbus, Ohio in just a few weeks. But 37 million deaf people. And you know what? Those men have started churches to reach the hearing and the deaf. It's amazing when I think about it. 60 million Hispanic people now living in America. 47 million African Americans. 6.7 million Native Americans. 5.3 million Jewish people. 5 million Puerto Ricans living in America. Do you know the population of Puerto Rico tonight is only 3.8 million people? We've got more Puerto Ricans living in America than in Puerto Rico. 4 million from India, 3.4 million Muslims, 2.5 million Chinese, 2.3 million Vietnamese, 1.8 million Koreans, 1.1 million Ukrainians, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And who's going to tell those people about Jesus? If we're going to accomplish the impossible, we have to see the need. And we've got to recognize that something needs to be done. But secondly, we've got to resolve to do something. We not only need to see the need, but we need to resolve to do something. 
to accomplish the impossible, you and I need to resolve that we're going to do something by God's grace to solve the problem. We've got to resolve that God has saved us, and by his grace, you know what? We're going to do something about the situation. Sometimes I hear Christians say, well, you know, I, I just can't do anything. I can't do much. But every single one of us can do something. Yes, we can. Amen. Parents, let me encourage you tonight. Help us, let me encourage you. Take, take the time to teach your children from the Word of God, but, but take the time to teach them to give liberally. I mean, start them, out, start them out helping them understand, even if it's just a quarter a week or 50 cents a week, help them to understand that, hey, you know what? God wants us to reach our neighbors and this nation and the world. And you know what? We have missionaries that we support. And, and get them involved in mission giving. Amen. And get a stack of prayer cards from your missionaries or from the missionaries that come through. And, and have a time at family altar where you go through the prayer cards and you pray for those missionary families. And, and everybody can do something. Amen? Yes. Everybody can do something. Even the small children can do something. And each one of us ought to say, you know what? With God as my helper, with God as my helper, I'm going to do something to try and solve the problem of the unreached masses of people who need Jesus. Don't, don't worry about what you can't do. Do what you can for God's glory. Amen. A few weeks ago, I was, I was out in Phoenix, Arizona. We were we were working with some of our church planters out there, four and a half million people now living in the Phoenix Valley. You know, years ago, and it's a desert climate, and years ago, you know, nothing grew around Phoenix, and it was just basically desert. And I remember one time my wife and I came in, and we drove into Phoenix, and man, it was just so hot and dusty. But you know, somebody saw there was a need, and somebody resolved to do something. And they started pouring water to that desert land out there around the Phoenix, Arizona area. And they started watering that, that desert ground. And you know what? Today you can go out to the outskirts of Phoenix and, and drive for miles. And there are soybean fields and wheat fields and hay is growing. And there's tomatoes and there's commercial flowers and there's cabbage growing. And there's all kinds of different vegetables that they're harvesting. Why? Because somebody saw a need. And somebody said, you know what, I'm going to do something about that. Now, let's imagine that there's 100 acres of cabbage out there. Now, the workers, when they go out to pick it, of course, they, they pick it by hand. Or maybe they have a machine now, but they used to pick it by hand. I'd see them out there early, early in the morning, actually before dawn, because it gets so hot. Now, all of those workers could gather at the end of the field, and they could say, well... You know, look at all this cabbage. Man, 100 acres of cabbage. Man, there's just not much we can do. I mean, they could, they could sit down at the end of the field and say, well, there's just nothing we can do about this. But what do they do? They pick up their boxes. And they get out to the field, and you know what? They get in a row, and each one gets in a row. And what do they do? They reach for that cabbage. That one cabbage, and they put that cabbage in a box. They're not looking behind to see how much they pick. They're not looking ahead to see how much they need to pick. No, no, they're just looking for that one head of cabbage to pick. And they work down the rows, and you know what? You drive past that field several days later, and guess what? The whole 100 acres of cabbage is picked. Why? Because somebody sees a need, and they're willing to resolve and do something about it. I'm saying tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes we look at our country and the great need to reach our nation and the world for that matter, and we get to thinking, well, there's so much that needs to be done. You know what? I'm so small. I'm so in insignificant. There's just nothing much I can do, and we end up doing nothing, and that's why that's a tragic thing. The worst thing we could do, determine God has a place for you to serve, Amen. and determine you're going to get in the place where God wants you to be, yes. and you're going to do what God wants you to do. Don't, don't let other people, don't let other people you know, talk you out of it. Don't let other people, you know, say, well, maybe you shouldn't think about that. Maybe you should just go ahead and trust the supernatural God. Right. Don't let them stop you. The great possibilities of our God. Let me talk about the poverty of our minds for just a moment. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I want you to think about the poverty in our minds. The poverty of our thinking. God's ability is so far beyond our ability to even imagine. You know, in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, For my thoughts... 
God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is so much smarter than me. It's not our, it's not our, our mission to, to try and, and bend our thinking to his thinking. No, no, it's our mission to just elevate our thinking to thinking like Jesus. On a mission Sunday like this, that, that's the goal during a mission Sunday, a missions conference. We need to come to the place where we elevate our thoughts to thinking things like Jesus would want us to think. My thoughts can be so tied to this earth. My thoughts can be so tied to what maybe my ability or my lack of ability. My thoughts can be so tied to what I can only see. But you know what? We have to elevate our thinking to thinking like Jesus. That's, what, that's the purpose of this whole Sunday. When I think about that, I think about a foreign missionary who goes to a foreign land and he learns a foreign language and he, he does a good job of, of, of learning that language. He gets a good command of the language, and he begins to teach, and he begins to preach in that language. And, and I've actually experienced this when I was pastoring and, and seeing this firsthand. Missionaries will come off the field after years on a foreign field, and their thinking has, has really changed to the culture they're living in. And they're speaking this foreign language, and now they come back to the homeland, and they'll sit in a restaurant, and they'll try and figure out a menu in English, and they're having a hard time. Why? Because, because their thinking has changed. You know what my problem is? If I'm not careful, I, I, I start thinking in Larson. See, I, 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 my, my, my thoughts are so limited, and I start thinking in Larson. And, and, and what happens is from time to time, if I'm not careful, when I'm thinking in Larson, I, I have a hard time thinking like Jesus. Right. Jesus wants me to transition my thinking. Notice what he says according to the power in Ephesians chapter 3 here, verse 20. He says, according to the power that worketh in us. That word worketh there has the same meaning as the word effectual over in James chapter 5, 16, the affection, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It, it means mighty, it means efficient, it means active, it means to foot, put forth power. So if I'm going to transition my thinking, and I've, if, I, if, I, if I stop thinking in Larson and I start thinking like Jesus wants me to think, it's going to require me to live a spirit-filled life, isn't it? I'm going to have to walk in the spirit. I'm going to have to come to that place where, you know what, I'm allowing the spirit to control me, and, 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 and I'm transitioning my thinking to thinking like I want to think, and I'm thinking like Jesus wants me to think. When it comes to, when it comes to him, when it comes to his ministries, when it comes to missions, all of that comes into play. I've got to be spirit-led. I've got to be spirit-controlled. Now, there are some things far beyond my thinking, and there are some things far beyond your thinking. And we have to come to this place of, of stop thinking that, you know, God is not doing what he used to do. That, that is what Zig Ziglar used to call stinking thinking. Okay? So the great possibilities of our God, the poverty of our minds, let me wrap this up because I am getting a little bit hungry. Look at the third thing here, the purpose in our lives. Look at verse 21. Now unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Throughout all ages, world without end, amen. amen. Now, I know you know this, but we do not exist tonight for God's good. We exist for God's glory. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we have to step out and, and trust him. And sometimes, sometimes for him to get the glory, sometimes for him to get the glory, he marches us down a path of, of faith where we have to step out and really trust him and, and believe him and obey him. Sometimes he marches us down a path of of uh, uh, sometimes some real circumstances that come into our lives. And, and uh, you know, that might, be, that might be where you are tonight. You know, you're marching down this path where God has brought you down this path, and, and you know what? You're just having to trust him every step of the way. 
I remember, I remember resigning my last church that I planted up in northwest Arkansas and, and coming to BIMI, and I'll never forget that day because God was marching me down a path of faith, and, and he was saying, can you trust me? Can you trust me to turn over that church, and can you trust me to have no income and to come and to do what I'm calling you to do? Can you trust me to just, uh, you know, pack up a truck and just leave all those people behind and, and move to a place you've never lived before? Can you just trust me to just take those steps? And you know, God led me down that path of faith, but I'm so glad that I was taking those steps. And I was glad that he, the supernatural God, enabled me to take those steps, step by step. And now I look back today and I, I say to myself, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I took that step. And, and I'm so glad I trusted him here. And man, I, I am so glad that he showed himself mighty there. And I'm so glad that when we were up against a wall and we seemed like there was no solution to the problem and, and, and no provision that was going to be made, God provided and took care of us. The supernatural yes, God sir. can do that in your life tonight. Yes, sir. And by the way, he wants to get the glory, not only when we're young, but when we're old. The Bible says here in this passage of Scripture, throughout all ages, he wants to get the glory. In every stage of your life, he wants to get the glory. Yes, glory hey, teenagers, tonight, he wants, he wants to be glorified by your yes, life. Amen. These young ladies that were baptized this morning, what a thrill to hear that story. One sister getting saved and making sure she was saved and then leading her sister to the Lord. Amen. Hey, God wants to get the glory. Yes. Young adults, God wants to get the glory. You senior citizens tonight, God wants to get the glory in your life. In the past, you know, and we just need to trust God that he can do the things he says he will do. Ah, I love this. I love this thought. We serve the God of the impossible. God did the impossible for Moses, didn't he? He did the impossible for Noah. He did the impossible for the children of Israel. He did the impossible for Mary. He did the impossible for Paul, for Peter, for John. But about 1980, he just kind of quit doing the impossible, didn't he? No, he's, he still wants, you say, well, the government's too strong and the culture is too rotten in the day we live and we could give human reason after human reason after human reason why it's too tough in this hour to trust God and do something great for God. Meanwhile, God is saying, hey, I'm not done yet. I'm still able. I can do what you think is impossible. And whatever you and I have inwardly may be struggling with what we have inwardly that we're struggling with, let's get over it. Let's pray in earnest. Let's ask God to do something supernatural. He may be leading you down a path of faith tonight when it comes to really, really being used of him in your giving. I think every mission's emphasis ought to have a, really a, a time where God's people get even more involved in this matter of giving and and being involved in this matter of worldwide evangelization and being more involved in the matter of prayer. But he may be taking you on a path tonight of faith where, you know what, he has been calling, and you know he's been calling, and you've been hearing his call. You don't know exactly what he's calling you to yet, but you, you're, he just doesn't stop calling. Right. And he may want you to take that next step tonight. I really do believe that God is speaking to hearts tonight. I have to believe that he is. I know that the purpose of a mission's emphasis is to help us see the need and to try and resolve this need. But I know God probably is calling people tonight. So we're going to pray in just a moment. And maybe you need to pray tonight, God, are you calling me? Are you calling me to step out and take that path of faith? I do believe tonight that an emphasis like today brings us right to the edge of the Red Sea. <laughs> it really does. And, and we, can, we can let circumstances change our attitude, and we can let unbelief creep in, and we can let apathy kind of take over, or we can say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to walk that path. I'm ready to take that step. 
I'm ready to be used of you. And I trust that would be your case. It may be a teenager in here tonight. It may be a young couple in here tonight. It, it may be an older couple. We had a camp this past summer for people praying about coming into missions. We had a couple there, 60-some years old, came to Camp Bimmy. By the end of the week, they had determined that God wanted them in missions. And you know what? They're heading for a, a military ministry where they're going to step in and be relief missionaries for military men who are on the mission field who have to take a furlough. I, I, don't, know, I don't know how it's going to be done in your life. I, I don't know. I can't tell you tonight. I, I really don't know, but I do know this, that this is a time, a Sunday like this is a time of revival from the inside out to believe that God is able. Amen. Father, tonight as pastor comes to conclude Amen. the service, I, I pray you take the simple message again tonight. Use Amen. it in the lives of your people. Lord, may your people be willing to take that next step. Lord, you want to bring us down this path of faith to trust you, believe you, obey you. And Lord, we realize tonight that faith is not a destination, it's a journey. And so tonight, dear Lord, I pray you'd encourage your people. I pray that the giving here at Currytown Baptist Church for worldwide evangelization and missions and church planting, Lord, would increase in the days and the weeks ahead. But Lord, that the faith of your people would increase in that process yeah. to trust you for the impossible, right. for things that we can only imagine. Because, Lord, you are able. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor.